as we serve the Master here. Holy, holy, that's what the angels sing. And I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. But when I sing redemption story, the angels will fold their wings. For angels never felt the joys that our salvation brings. We wait. I hear another anthem, blending voices clear and strong. Unto him who has redeemed us and has bought us is that song. Oh, we've come through many trials, battles fought, victories won. All for him who has saved us and has said to us, well done, holy. Holy, that's what the angels sing. And I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. But check this out. When I sing redemption story, the angels will fold their wings. For angels never felt the joys that our salvation brings. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, it's so good to be here in your presence again tonight. Lord, we would see Jesus. Yet again, let us look full into his wonderful face so that the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. In his name we ask. Amen. We've looked at the sign of a savior and the sign of his kingdom the sign of his people last night God said I want there to be a sign that you, you may know that I am your God and that you are my people ten commandments not merely a list of rules but a description of what God's people look like how we live not just how we believe how we love not just how we think as my kids would say that's cool stuff. Tonight we want to look at another sign of what it means to be a disciple. Remember that the Seven Signs series is a harvest series about what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. For a true disciple will always bring people to the harvest. Jesus talked about it, if you follow me, I'll make you a fisher of men. In other words, those who truly walk with Jesus will have such a powerful experience, will experience great things in life uh, to the point that you share them with someone else. And you see, when Jesus did this with his disciples, he constantly faced the problem that they didn't understand the basic simplicity of being a disciple. Too often in our culture, we think the discipleship begins after you get baptized. No. Discipleship is what leads to baptism. When you begin to walk with Jesus, we saw that in the sign of a Savior. You discover that He is your Savior. He forgives you for your sins. The sign of His kingdom, that you are somebody who's going to grow in grace now and learn great and wonderful truths from Scripture. And then we saw last night the sign of His people, that you now have a way to understand what life is about, not just rules. It's a definition of what it means to be a son or daughter of God. A disciple who is growing then can also to understand the sign of his mercy in Matthew chapter 12 verses 38 to 40 Matthew chapter 12 verses 38 to 40 notice what Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees you know this continuously happened in the ministry of Jesus on one occasion he spent the whole day healing people feeding thousands uh, uh, incredible miracles and, and comforting people it, it, it was overwhelming and at the end of that day the scribes and Pharisees said to him show us a sign I mean you just spent the whole day with Jesus watching him do miracle after miracle and the best thing you can ask after watching a few hundred miracles today uh, could you show us like a sign what's Jesus supposed to do 
If he's been showing you the evidence of his ministry all day long, and the first thing you ask is, how do we know that you're the, you know, show us another sign. And that's how we know there are people today who are truly addicted to miracles. They constantly need a miracle to know that God is with them. This is why often when Jesus performed a miracle, he would tell them, see that you tell nobody, you know, because it becomes a fuss when people hear about miracles. And so now, look at this passage in chapter 12 of Matthew, verse 38, 39, and 40. And certain of the scribes and Pharisees, now this is another occasion, came to Jesus and said unto him, what? We're asking you to show us a sign. Can you imagine Jesus looking at them now with a broken heart as he pronounces verse 39 and evil and corrupt generation seeks after a sign but a sign will not be given it. Now imagine he's talking to the leaders of Israel, the leaders of the temple, the religious leaders to boot as well as the political leaders of the people. And he's telling them, in answer to your question, I can't believe what's happening in today's society here, and you're not going to get a sign. You could just imagine the priest looking at him incredulously. You're not going to get a sign, except the sign of Jonah. Uh, the sign of Jonah? You know, when I first read this passage as, uh, as a kid a few years ago, only a few, I remember the young people are not buying it at all. But their parents are, yes, we're all young. That's right. You, you see, when I learned this passage as a kid, I remember, oh, the sign of Jonah. Yeah, amen. But I never learned what it meant. What is the sign of Jonah? Jesus tells the leaders of Israel, this is a corrupt generation. It's, a, it, it's an adulterous generation. And you all you want is a bunch of miracles. I'm not going to give you that sign. Except the sign of Jonah. Well, the best way to understand the sign of Jonah is to remember the story of Jonah. You remember when God appeared to Jonah. What did he say to him? Behold the sins of Nineveh. Just like with Sodom and Gomorrah. Nineveh had become so sinful. So corrupt. So beyond any human comprehension of evil, that God, you know, the wages of sin is death. There are times in history that, that the death came directly because of the sin. There are some scholars who have suggested very strongly that the story of Sodom and Gomorrah was a fable, that these are some of the fables registered in the Bible that give hope and cheer to God's people throughout history until the finding of Ebla, a town in Israel. And, and there, were, there, were, um, uh, uh, there was a building in the town of Ebla that had thousands of clay tablets that turned out to be receipts for business transactions and in among those thousands of clay tablets they found receipts for the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah so it's not a fable sin does corrupt sin does destroy and sin does kill the wages of sin is death and Nineveh was in the same position and God calls on Jonah and he says to him, I want you to go preach in Nineveh. Uh, what am I supposed to preach? Tell them that their sins have come before heaven, but that I want to give them life. Remember that when God sounds a warning, it's because he wants to give life. I'm standing in the state of Florida in the United States of America. In, the, in less than the last year, you have experienced how many hurricanes? One, two, three, four. What did they say to you on television and radio and everywhere else? This is a hurricane warning. Why would the government care about warning you? Because they want you to live. A warning is about life, not about death. You have the option to live. And in this room, I have dear friends who lived in Homestead after Hurricane Andrew. They found nothing left of their town, much less their house. 